guys, welcome back to my channel. And as the name suggests, you know we're going to be talking about the male reproductive system in humans today. And before we get started, there are just two basic things that you have to keep in mind. Number one, the importance of reproduction when it comes to sustenance of a species or continuation of human species especially. And the second thing is that we humans are sexually reproducing organisms. That means we are dioecious. That means that we have two sexes which each produce a gamete which undergo fertilization in order to produce an offspring with variations in it which is the speciality of sexual reproduction. So keeping these facts in mind, let us move and learn about the male reproductive system and its anatomy in today's class. Now both male and female reproductive system in humans have two kinds of organs. Number one is the primary sex organs which are mainly the only organs responsible for the production of gametes. Gametes which are the carrier of genetic information of that particular person. So in males that organ is the testis. All right. And there is another kind, another set of organs, which are the secondary sexual organs, which do not help in producing the gametes, but they do help in the entire process of sexual reproduction. So let us start with the basic outline of the anatomy of a male reproductive system. So yes, this is the primary sexual organ, which is the testis. And this testis is where spermatogenesis or production of sperms, which is the male gamete, takes place. And testis is usually placed outside the body, outside the body in the sense. It's placed in a sac, as you can see, known as scrotum. And this scrotum hangs outside the body because for the process of spermatogenesis, the temperature required is about 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius, lesser than that of the body temperature. Hence, it is located outside the body and this is the testis. There are two pairs. I mean, there is a pair of testis. Now, if we go into the details of the primary sexual organ, this is a magnified version of testis. So as you can see, it is divided into about 250 to 300 testicular lobules. Okay, testicular lobules. I couldn't really draw 250 to 300 of them. So these divisions that you see is one single testicular lobule. And in each testicular lobule, there is about one to three seminiferous tubules, okay? These are the seminiferous tubules. And now the seminiferous tubule is lined by a germinal epithelium, okay? And now this germinal epithelium is where the process of spermatogenesis takes place because it has two kinds of cells. Number one are spermatogonia. This is the seminiferous tubule. And the other kind of cell is the Sertoli cell or subtentacular cells or nurse cells. Now spermatogonia, these cells are the ones which are the forerunners for sperms. That means these cells undergo meiosis in order to produce sperms. But these nurse cells or Sertoli cells on the other hand help in nourishing the sperm. So they act as nurse cells. And apart from these cells, there is also an interstitial space in between the seminiferous tubules and that interstitial space is filled with another kind of interstitial cells known as Leydig cells. Now Leydig cells produce the hormones necessary for reproduction in males or the secondary sexual characters in males. So those, ho those hormones are known as androgens and they are produced by these cells known as Leydig cells. So this is the basic anatomy of seminiferous tubules. What happens is after the sperms are generated, generated, just suppose that the sperms have been produced from spermatogonia. Now, what is the path of travel for these sperms? So now from the spermatogonia, they go to Rete testis. Rete testis is another group of tubes. From the Rete testis, it goes to the Vasa efferentia. And finally, after Vasa efferentia, these mature sperms enter the epididymis and epididymis now is divided into three parts. Now epididymis is the organ or the part of the male reproductive system where mature sperms are stored. Okay. It is divided into three parts, the caput epididymis, corpus epididymis and corda epididymis. 
and most of the mature sperm are stored in the cauda epididymis which is almost the tail of epididymis and when they're stored and when they have to be carried for the process of reproduction it happens through this spermatic cord now this spermatic cord has different kinds of constituents so suppose mature sperm are being stored here in the cauda epididymis now vas deferens which is one of the main accessory duct so we learned about primary sexual organs and secondary sexual organs now these accessory ducts come under secondary sexual organs so this accessory duct which is known as vas deferens which you can see here in a proper way carries the sperms from the cauda epi epididymis to the glands which are responsible for the production of semen so this vas deferens it begins from here and it is taken in a bundle known as the spermatic cord now the spermatic cord is surrounded by this canal known as inguinal canal so now the spermatic cord contains arteries nerves and the vas deferens which is response uh, which are needed for the testis and it is carried over here before we move into what exactly happens here let us talk about the other tissues and muscles involved near the testis so now the testis you know has to descend into the scrotum out of the body for it to function and this usually happens in the 7th month of gestation or in the 7th month when the baby boy is in the mother's uterus so in that 7th month there is this one tissue known as gubernaculum tissue which is attaching the testis to the scrotum which helps in the descent of this testis into the scrotum there is another kind of another set of muscles known as cremaster muscle which is responsible for the movement of testis either ascending it or descending it in the time of uh, flight and fright or when there are temperature changes etc so that is regarding the muscles and tissues near testis so now let's go to what happens in this area so in this area we know that vas deferens now carries the sperms now it only has the sperms but sperms are not released outside the body in the form of just sperms they are released in the form of a fluid and the formation of this fluid is all credits to these glands which are present here so let us start with the first kind of gland that is the seminal vesicle now the seminal vesicle produces almost 60% of the fluid or the seminal plasma which the fluid is known as the seminal plasma so semen minus sperms is the seminal plasma so seminal vesicles produce the seminal plasma which is rich in fructose inositol prostaglandins and many other enzymes which are required for the motility and functioning of sperms okay and after that these are the prostate gland and this prostate gland is the only gland which is not paired in the sense seminal vesicle is paired there are two of them but prostate gland is just one of it now this prostate gland produces about 25% of the seminal plasma and it is a very acidic content which has a ph about 6.5 which is rich in calcium and other nutrients which are very important for the motility of sperms and also the activation of sperms and finally the last gland the smallest gland you see here bulbourethral gland also known as the cowper's gland is used for the lubrication of the external external genitalia so lubrication is the production of a mucosa kind of substance which is produced in the spongy layer of the external genitalia which we're going to come upon which helps in the process of ejaculation or the removal of semen or sperms so after that we finally come to the external genitalia which is known as the penis and it has a head which is known as glans penis which is covered with foreskin is a small layer of skin which is also known as prepuce so this is our external genitalia which aids in the process of movement of sperms from the from the male organism to the female organism another fact about the penis is that uh, as you can see this is the urinary bladder and this is the urethra so urethra acts as a combined passage both for semen and urine 
So penis is used both for uh, ejaculation of sperms and also removal of urine from the body. So this is the external genitalia of male organism. And for the process of transfer of sperms, the penis has this layer of uh, corpora cavernosa which is responsible for the erection of penis which helps in the ease of transfer of sperms from the male to the female. So this is the spongy layer of corpora cavernosa and it is also lined by the lubricants or the mucosa produced by bulbourethral gland which makes it easier for the seminal fluid to flow out. This is it about the anatomy of male reproductive system. We will go into the details about the anatomy of female reproductive system and the process of spermatogenesis and oogenesis in the further videos that I will be releasing. So yes, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you learned something.